Good morning. Good to have you with us this morning. We hope you had the opportunity to watch Christmas Eve worship uh, sometime starting on late Wednesday through the weekend so far. Um, we've had, what did you say, 77 views? 73. 73 views of the service. Um, and I was talking to Debbie and I said, well, that's way more than 77 people because just by my family and my son's family, there are 13 of us. So it's probably well over 100 people who uh, participated in watching our service on Christmas Eve. And a special thanks to everybody who participated and especially to our film editor, uh, Debbie. You might have noticed the magical changing of pyramid colors during the <laughs> recording because it was recorded over a stretch of about a week and a half. Um, so some pyramids were still Advent uh, but we did ultimately get to the Christmas Eve pyramids. Um, so thank you, Robert, for helping that to happen. Um, we ended up, I believe, with 12 pigs, um, which will be sent away to other countries to help um, families and villages with security and stability. Um, the Fair Trade Fair went well this year. Um, thank you for, part for participating in that. And um, we thank you for the offerings for the Community Food Bank, which were over $1,000. Over $1,200. Over $1,200. <laughs> and uh, as you know, that money will buy um, probably close to $9,000 worth of food. And it was matched. And, and all of it was matched. So that increases it even more. So thank you very much for participating in that outreach from the congregation. And is our list up here today? We're, yes, the, yeah, it's actually right now. We're now. running right now behind me, okay. <laughs> um, so thank you very much for that. Um, I know that there are many, many people in the community who will appreciate um, your generosity for that event here at American. Um, we are continuing, of course, to worship at 10 o'clock with limits about crowd size. We don't get real big, usually not more than 25 people at a worship service next Sunday. Um, as long as everybody in the gospel music group is willing to be here, uh, we will do our gospel music Sunday, but it will be primarily Christmas music next week again, because that's the second Sunday of Christmas next week. Uh, so please keep that in mind. And ultimately the wise men will get to the manger um, Robert and I were talking about this morning, he says, they're so slow, and I said, have you ever watched a camel walk across the desert? <laughs> they're pretty darn slow. What? <laughs> yep. So, um, good to see you, David. How are you feeling? Better or so-so? So-so. David's been battling a cold, so, but good to see you out and about again. Um, I'm trying to think what else. We have our regular offerings, um, white athletic socks, um, stable food items, non-spoilable food items for our um, food cart back there. And when that fills, it will go over to Grace St. Paul's um, food pantry and they have operating hours just about every day of the week. So um, your gifts will not just sit there. Once we fill that cart up, we will take it where it will be given away. Sometimes it goes out from here. Even. And sometimes it even goes out from here. So please keep that in mind as you grocery shop or don't grocery shop, whichever your choice is. We just started last week ordering from Fry's for the first time. Um, and my favorite pickup time is 7 a.m. because nobody else is out at 7 a.m. most of the time. So, um, and that's worked very well for us. Our, as I told you, our children have told us. Uh, 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 uh. You're not going into a store. So um, we endanger the teenagers. <laughs> we send them in. No, we don't. Um, <laughs> not at seven in the morning. None of them are out of bed until noon. So um, you can use those opportunities at grocery stores. Just keep yourselves safe. And remember, it's easy to pick it up, the virus. Um, our daughter-in-law, Shannon, um, we Zoomed with the entire family on Christmas morning, and Shannon is looking very good. She is recovering very quickly. 
um, from having COVID-19. And Joshua's tests so far have come back negative. So it appears that he has not gotten it from her. So um, uh, we're very thankful for that and for your prayers for them. Let's see, what else is there? Just regular worship, and if you can't make it, you can watch on YouTube or the church website and the link to YouTube. Um, and I think that's probably the end of the announcements today. Christmas decorations will stay up for a while, um, another Sunday, and then they will come down and we'll be focused on Epiphany and the Sundays after Epiphany, which will include the baptism of our Lord. So. Um, those things are all upon us rather quickly, and before we know it, I'm afraid Lent will be here. Uh, so let's pray that uh, the vaccination materials arrive in a timely fashion, too, uh, for all of us. So uh, we continue now with the order for confession and forgiveness. Robert tells me he's going to be slow today. Can you see how he's walking? His back is going out this morning. So uh, we thank you for being here, Robert. Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways the, the glory, glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. We continue with our opening hymn, Joy to the World, on page 267.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature, and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our next hymn is 279, verses 1, 2, and 4. so that he might receive 
so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child then, also an heir through God. Here ends the second reading. When the time came for their purification according to law of Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice uh, according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword shall pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Holy Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now, of course, if you follow the Gospel stories in Matthew and Luke about Jesus and what takes place in what order, this seems a little out of order. It, it doesn't seem like they went on Jesus' eighth day to Jerusalem to have him blessed. They may have indeed gone to a synagogue to have that done. But the journey to Jerusalem would have been very difficult. And we're told that the wise men find Jesus in Bethlehem, not in Nazareth. So just remember this. Chronologically, the Gospels are not in order. They tell us some very differing stories in terms of timelines. But that doesn't mean that these things did not happen. 
So just keep that in mind as you read this and kind of went, hmm, this seems a little off to me. It just happens to be the way the church here decided to use it. Our next hymn is, it came upon a midnight clear, verses 1, 3, and 4. And you, if you would prefer the hymnal, I think you have the number there for it, 282. glasses you're just kind of a blur out there imagine what it must have been for Simeon and Anna lifetime spent at the temple waiting waiting and waiting and waiting and watching the people their own people God's elect suffering during the reign of kings who were determined to be involved with the interlopers, the Romans, who wanted to gain the wealth of Rome for their own purposes and use, who wanted to control the temple and living in the temple, they would have known firsthand about all the corruption in the temple. They must have wondered if it would ever happen that the sin and brokenness of Israel 
for which Israel had been driven into exile several times, still existed and was rampant in the midst of the people. They were indeed trapped in sin. When one comes to know the law of God, it doesn't take long to realize how often one falls short. That includes you and me. We are trapped by that sin, that breaking of God's rule for our lives. And so God chose to correct the problem. And I don't know about you, but I'm really happy God didn't just choose to go, all right, it's all done. The whole thing is finished. It didn't turn out the way I expected it, but that's not how God operates. God saw the problem with the freedom of the will of people, the freedom of the will to reject God's rule for life and civilization, for how people should live with God and how people should live with other people. That is, after all, the intent of the law. It's to create a, and we'll go right back to the Bethel Bible series, it's to create the harmony that God created all of all things with originally. That's the purpose of the law. But because of the nature of sin and the way in which sin is a part of every individual's life, We are born with that sin present in us. And though we may not act on it right away, boy, it doesn't take long. Let me tell you, if you haven't done it by the time you're about four, you're an amazing individual. And if it doesn't get repeated hundreds of times by the time you're 14 or 15 or 16, you're an incredibly right person with God at least in a lot better place than I was at those ages. I think once again about my boys driving the family car. And it doesn't take me long to think back to when I was 16. And I destroyed two family cars. Burned the engines out. I wonder how that happened. And I wasn't a bad kid, but boy, I sure knew how to race my dad's big Mercury Montclair. Big motor against Chrysler 300s, against Mustang 289s. Oh, well, I wander off, I'm sorry. Um, But the reality is the sin is present in all of us. I had a strong relationship with God as a teenager, president of two youth groups at the same time in town. The one where my parents attended church and the one where Melody attended church. And then in addition, we attended the Episcopal Church youth group and we attended the Methodist Church youth group. Can you tell how big the town was we lived in? There was almost nothing else to do except race down Main Street in the car or go to Christian youth groups on weekends. Yeah, we had basketball and football and dances too, but those only last a short time. So we know about that brokenness in our lives. We know that we make mistakes, that our choices often aren't what would please God. So God made a choice not to destroy, but instead to heal. And God's choice wasn't to to come down in the fullness of himself, which no one could have stood, and just make everything right, right on the spot, but instead to give people, his people and all people, you notice Simeon said Gentiles and Jews, not just for Jews, but for all people, non-Jew and Jew alike, that God had sent his Savior for all people. But freedom of the will comes in again because we can choose not to participate. If we participate in this relationship with God through the birth of this child in Bethlehem, starting from the tiniest of beginnings and growing up and maturing and then reaching out 
in about a three year or so ministry to bring God's truth and healing and powerful grace to the lives of people. If we choose, we can walk away from that. But the choice to follow, that choice comes from the Spirit. It is only by the power of God's Spirit as our daily guide that you and I have the gift of faith. It is only by the Spirit that we can believe in Jesus Christ. Without the Spirit, we're lost. Because we're going to, according to Simon and Garfield, or, or Garfunkel go slip sliding away. Some of you may remember that song. Uh, Debbie can't, she's too young. Um, <laughs> from the late 60s and early 70s. You and I are in a place where we could never be on our own because of the gift of the child of Bethlehem, because of God's gift of his son, because of God's grace and love for all people's lives. God chose not to destroy, but instead to heal and offer an opportunity for a change of heart. And it doesn't mean that we don't still get it wrong sometimes, but because we have faith through the Spirit in Christ, we can return as often as necessary to confess and to have a contrite heart for the times that we did not do what we were supposed to do. On Christmas morning, I got a card from Melody. I'm not nearly as good as that card said. But it was how she felt about my life in my ministry. And my boys always ask me, are you okay? And I say, my tears aren't tears of sadness, though I've had those from time to time. My tears are tears of joy and thanksgiving to God. Stop and think how we have gotten through 2020. Just stop and think of the brokenness in the world the illness in the world, the problems for people with enough food, even in a nation where there's an abundance of food. It, it's folks who grew up like Carmelita in a mountain village in Mexico who, who learned how to live with the barest, barest minimum and to know joy in their relationship with Christ. In this country where we're accustomed to abundance, it's really tough. We don't know how to do that very well. We don't know how to get by on the barest minimum. Our lives are filled with car payments and mortgage payments and credit card payments and, well, you know, the list goes on and on. I want my house at 70 degrees, so my gas bill is high, and the electric bill goes up with it automatically every winter. I want a hot shower in the morning, so my water bill goes up, and my gas bill, because we have a gas hot water heater. I want all of those things. When Carmelita tells you the story of her life as a child, and how her mother went out in the midst of snowstorms to cut wood to build a small fire in the home to cook on and to give a, a small amount of warmth to her home for her children. You and I have little understanding of that. And her family lived in the mountains where the snow was deep in the winter time. But what we have had this year is the knowledge of the Savior. It is the knowledge that God's gift of the church has not stopped, has not gone away in the face of a huge problem all over the world. But instead, you and I have been able to celebrate, we have been able to sing our hymns, pray our prayers, and yes, the prayer chain has been busier than ever. I've never seen the prayer chain so busy. 
It's, it's constant. It's nearly four, five, six times a day. And not for the same requests. But people turn in their faith to the gift of God's presence in Jesus Christ in their brothers and sisters of the faith and to the church. And we don't look at 2021 with a sense that it's going to be worse. With confidence, we look at 2021 with a hope that with Christ, it's going to get better. You know, we sing, O little town of Bethlehem, and it came on a midnight clear, it came upon a midnight clear, and we think about the darkness those hymns talk about. It was the darkness of the night and the presence of Mary and Joseph and Mary giving birth to that baby in a dark stable. And how, what did God do? According to what scripture tells us, a light shone on Bethlehem that night. God's light, revealing God's true light, Jesus Christ for all of us. May we continue to celebrate Christmas is not over. We still have quite a bit of time in Christmas. The season is 12 days long in the church. And like another I've heard say this, it's God's intent that the spirit of Christmas stay in our lives and hearts year round. Not just for 12 days of the church year, but through all of the trials and tribulations and joys and celebrations of life. It is the presence of Jesus Christ which helps us to set aside the tribulations of sin and know instead the triumph and joy of being right with God through our Savior. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray now for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, for God's creation and for the church. Gracious Lord, we continue to be in awe and wonder at the gift that you sent in this tiny infant born in Bethlehem in a stable and laid in a manger. We stand in awe of the power of his life, of his presence with the least, the last, and the lost, his presence in the midst of the tribulation of his own people under the thumb of Rome, of his willing heart and humility to allow himself to be sacrificed for the sin of all humankind to set us free so that the burden of sin is no longer a burden. It is not a yoke on our shoulders. It is instead the yoke of God's love through Christ which we wear and carry, which is no burden at all. Be in our lives every day, Lord Jesus. Let your spirit guide us 
Let it be her yes in our lives to your presence and your gifts of life, forgiveness, and salvation. And help us to know with confidence the hope that belongs to us through your Son. For we will always be with you. You were here yesterday, you are here today, and you will be with us in every one of our tomorrows, including that very last one and our last breath when you carry us home. Hear us, O God. Gracious Lord, we pray for Jim's doctor, Dr. Coffer. He's battling cancer right now, and we pray for your healing in his life. We pray that you restore his health, that you help him to understand how it is your power which transforms and brings healing. And we pray that he is okay in the weeks and months ahead. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we pray for Jim's cousin Jim that his triglycerides might be brought under control. And we pray for Jim's cousin Janet as she deals with a bad back. We pray for your continued healing, courage, and strength for her as she does the exercises she needs to do. And we pray for Jim. Here, practically without fail throughout the year, Sunday in and Sunday out, now he needs your healing for his eye. And we pray for that healing to be full and whole. We pray for Jim as he continues his ongoing battle with kidney stones. We pray you'll guide doctors to find a way to take care of that health issue for him. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we pray with thanksgiving that David is here with us today. But we pray for your continuing presence and healing for him, as well as for Julie. We pray that you'll be with Mark and Leanna in their work, that they will find that work meaningful, they will always find it appropriate, and that they might give you thanks for having the opportunity to be employed right now. We pray for Dave's business, that you'll be in the midst of that business, helping it to grow. It is certainly an opportunity for Dave to give witness to your presence and love in his life, which he does frequently. We pray too for Dave's cousin Lynn, uh, Candace and for Jerry Morris for healing. We pray for Linda who is in care and we offer prayers for Candace and Lisa and Alexis in Hawaii, that you will be with them to sustain and keep them. And we thank you that they're able to worship with us so many thousands of miles away every Sunday. Be with them to help them weather through and find a permanent home so they can get out of the apartment. Hear us, O oh God. Um, Dave, the Fina family? Pina, okay. Okay. Uh, Fernan Fernando, is that his name? Okay. We pray for the Pina family, Lord, at this time of loss and grief in their lives. We pray that you will break into that loss and grief and you will sustain and uphold them in this most difficult time. We pray that for all families who have, have had loved ones die uh, from the normal causes of death that we are accustomed to, to the very unusual cause of death, COVID-19. We pray for your comfort and peace to intervene in the lives of people whose loved ones have died and that you will bring them hope through your son. 
We pray for Pastor Ron and Becky. And we pray for Julie, that you will be with her as her balance gets restored. And, and we pray that that's going to happen for her. Bless these families with your loving presence. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we're going to pray for rain today because it's supposed to happen Monday night and Tuesday. And as many aches and pains as that gives many of us, the desert is super thirsty, Lord. Our trees, our cactus, our homes, our city streets, the desert itself needs to be fed by your gift of a rainstorm. We thank you that we have one coming and we pray that it will give us an adequate amount of rain, not to flood, but to saturate and soak everything. It's been a long dry spell this year, Lord. We pray that you'll place your hand on this part of the world so that we might have the kind of rain we need. Hear us, O oh God. All these things we pray in the name of your Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the blessings of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and forever. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.